My name is Josh Jacobs. I am the pastor of a small Bible church in Indianapolis. A very unusual event happened to me last night as I was immersed in writing my latest book on how God works behind the scenes in Christians' lives for their mutual benefit. As I was typing, there came a knock on my door. Can I help you? I don't want to be a bother, but I was wondering if you could spare a sandwich or something to eat. It's been a long time since I've had something to eat. Sure. Come in, come in. We're just about to have supper. Would you like to join us? I sure would, but you don't even know me and you open your house to me. Oh, friend, you are always welcome here. Hey, Trish, I want you to meet... Uh, by the way, what is your name? Oh, my name is Bubba. Nice to meet you, Bubba. Bubba is going to stay and have dinner with us tonight. That's nice. I think we have enough. Have a seat, you two. That's mighty nice of you, ma'am. So, tell me, Bubba. Why haven't you eaten for a while? To tell you the truth, sir. Uh, please, just call me Josh. Well, to tell you the truth, Josh, I didn't really have to eat. Oh, nonsense, Bubba. Don't think you're imposing on us. No, Bubba. Feel right at home here. You're welcome. No, you don't understand. I don't need to eat because I'm not of this world. What do you mean, you're not of this world? I'm an angel. <laughs> an angel? Come on now. It's true. I'm an angel. I've been sent by Almighty God to assist you writing your book. How did you know about my book? The Lord has instructed me to tell you He is very pleased with you and what you are doing. He wants to make sure everything is right. So He sent me to assist you. Let's see here. You come to my house looking like, well, if you'll excuse the expression, a bum? and ask if I could spare some food because you haven't eaten in a long time? That doesn't sound like any angel to me. Don't you remember the passage in Hebrew where it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained and angels unaware. Thanks. Let me think. Uh, Hebrew 13.2 I know that passage, but who ever heard of an angel named Bubba? There's Michael and Gabriel and... Can you prove you're an angel? I don't blame you for challenging me. Observe. Alright, so you can disappear and reappear. Good trick. I have one more question. Is Jesus Christ God and did he appear in the flesh? Yes, and I am his envoy. Jesus Christ is God. He proved himself to be the one true God through his many miracles and even transformed himself into a brighter light than the sight of his closest apostles, Peter, James, and John. He was crucified according to the Father's will in order to take away the punishment of your sins. And he rose from the dead to prove to more than 500 witnesses that he is the Almighty God and his testimony is true. He is the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to the Father except through Him. Our creatures live and die based on His deliberate will. Well, that answer is adequate for now. But I will keep my eye on you, just in case you are actually an angel of darkness, here to deceive me. I welcome your vigilance. I wouldn't have it no other way. are you going to assist me? I am here to show you what is really going on behind the scenes. 
Before we do that, it is necessary for your spirit to temporarily leave your body as we observe a person who is struggling with a problem in his life. My spirit has to leave my body? Wouldn't I have to die first? No, no, haven't you heard of soul travel? That's where your spirit can temporarily leave your body, but your spirit is still attached to your body by a thin spiritual cord. Now, if that cord were ever broken, yes, your physical body would die. Isn't that rather dangerous? Who holds your life in his hands? You, me, or Christ? Well, obviously Christ does. You have nothing to fear then. Can you give me one reference in the Bible that talks about this cord? Sure. Let's see. It's called the silver cord. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and the verse uh, 6, 7. Talks about dying in his, this way. Or ever the silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl, that is, your head be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, talking about your heart stops pumping, or the wheel broken at the cistern, that is, your bowels get stopped up. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. It's obvious that you know the scriptures. I was around when it was written. I should know them. How do we go about this? First, tell Trish that you are going to sleep for a while and not to wake up for any reason. Tell her that you will be going on a journey and by no means you are to be disturbed. Then come with me to the bedroom. Hey Trish, Bubba is going to lead me on a journey in my spirit. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to lay down in bed and go to sleep. I am not to be disturbed for any reason whatsoever. It could be very dangerous. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Be careful. Don't worry. Jesus has me in his hands. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. Now lie down and close your eyes, Josh. Come with me now. Come on, Bubba. You're gonna tell me now that you're hungry? No, no, Josh. This is our first assignment. Taco Bell? Follow me, Josh. Wait a minute. When we were flying and landing, I heard music. And it sounded like the old Superman series. <laughs> I thought you would like that. What? So why are we here, Bubba? 
My angelic friend. You see that man? Uh huh. He's a true man of God. His name is Ron Hutchison. He's there to witness to a customer. He's very sharp, knows the scripture very well, even by heart. And? Let's watch him. Tell me, sir, have you the anointing from on high? What are you talking about? I mean, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? I've been born again, if that's what you mean. But have you partaken in the gift of the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues? No, I can't say that I have. But I am an elder of the Bible-believing church, if that's any consolation. But you need the filling of the Holy Ghost if you want to be complete and effective. It says here in Acts, That poor man has been zeal for God, but he's been brainwashed with the so-called health and wealth gospel. What do you mean? You see, he belongs to a charismatic church. His ministry teaches her members that if they are not healthy or well-to-do, they must be under the discipline of God. She teaches her members that in order to be spirit-filled, you must every now and then speak in tongues. I know that type of church. I myself don't go along with their ideas, but I feel they're not doing any harm, so I just let things alone. Here's the problem. Ron is suffering from severe depression. He has frequent pains from arthritis and believes that God is not pleased with him. His depression has kept him from getting a job, and he just goes around bumming food and asking for handouts. So he thinks he's not good enough for God. You got it. I suppose he believes he is about to lose his salvation too, right? Right. Let me give you some background. As you know, Satan and his demons hate men and want to see them suffer, lose faith, and if possible, kill them. Yes, the scriptures tell me that. One of the best ways of defeating Christians is to fill them with errors in their belief system. First of all comes compromise. Even though the scriptures plainly state that women are not to be pastors, rise pastor is a woman. In this day and age, women's roles in the church are many times dictated by what society has ordained. Yes, but women have always wanted to undermine God's plan for mankind by desiring positions that God has given to men. Women forgot that they are men's helpmates, not to be a ruler over them. Yes, I can see that you're referring to the curse placed upon women for being deceived by Satan. It says in Genesis 3.16, And your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. <laughs> it seems you know your scripture too. Women pastors say that first and second Timothy has nothing to do with them leading because Paul was a male chauvinistic. But if you ignore that, what if his pastor were a man? Can you tell me what's wrong with their teaching? I've always thought that there is a church for everyone, provided it believes in the basic tenets of the faith. What if I were to tell you that most of the charismatic churches redefine scripture to say what they want them to say? What do you mean? First of all, let's take the origin of us angels. Well, I believe you were created sometime in the six days of creation. So you believe these were six actual consecutive days of 24 hour each? Yes. Yes, I do. Most charismatic people believe that there are billions of years between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. And may be millions or even billions of years between so called days. Otherwise known as the gap theory. Yes, the belief that Genesis 1 and Genesis 1 2, Satan and his demons rule the earth with the dinosaurs. They say that Satan rules the world, and that is why verse 1 says it was without form and void. Do you know why they believe this? They want to first of all explain the why dinosaurs were before men. They also want to show that demons were the cause of such a ruthless time in the history of a full of death and destruction. Well, how do they explain the passage that says by one man death came into the world if there were millions of years of death and destruction before man was created? Scriptures that don't go along with how they want to believe they set aside along with their life. That kind of screws up the whole plan of salvation, doesn't it? That's right. No real need for a savior if sin doesn't really produce death. Why do you think people want to get into these types of churches? Simply, they want to do magic, but in Christian ways, so they say a few words and things magically happen. 
people are healed, some prophets come true, demons are apparently cast out, and they feel good by putting themselves in a state of euphoric speaking in gibberish that call tongues. Don't they claim that they are talking in angelic languages directly to God? I've never been able to understand them. <laughs> we angels have various language or dialect. We have a language that men doesn't understand, nor can even speak. How do you speak my language then? I can speak many languages. I have enough time to master many of men's languages. But believe me, men cannot learn angelic languages. But what about Paul who said, if I spoke with the tongue of angels in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? Paul says, if. He didn't say he could speak them. Believe me, he couldn't. So then, what is the gift of tongues? The word tongues means a particular known language that was given to the early disciples for the purpose of witnessing to people who didn't know the disciples' language, but needed to know the gospel in their own. Also, to give credence to the Jews that the Gentiles could also be saved without going through any rituals of first becoming a Jew. And I think I've, I've always known that, but I wasn't totally sure. Let's summarize Ron's problems here. He originally started studying his Bible because he fell in love with the Lord. In other words, he was saved, born again. Yes, he then got caught up in all the miracles he read, the apostle did, and wanted that in his life. He found a church that taught that he too could do the miracles Christ did and more. But didn't Christ say that they would? He told his apostles that. This was not to apply to every believer who would subsequently come to faith in Christ. Go on. Even though Ryan knew that much of the errors that his church was spewing out, he felt that, for the most part, they were true to the scripture. Do I hear compromise? That'll get you in trouble every time. Yes! Now Ron failed to analyze the consequences of accepting a few errors with so much good they were teaching. When they taught him that all of the God's people are successful and prosperous, he started wondering about his own spiritual condition because he wasn't either healthy nor prosperous. Well, believing them, I can see how your life would be considered a failure in God's eyes. I guess Ron forgot that the whole purpose of Christ's suffering, the penalty for our sins, was to save us who believe regardless of our failures. The real success in a person's life is knowing that you will be spending an eternity with Jesus and that he has already forgiven you of all your sins, inadequacies, and failures throughout your life. That's absolutely right. Ryan fails to understand that fact, regardless of his superior knowledge of the Bible. He appears to lack the wisdom to apply the Word of God in his life the right way. Ron wanted to do everything God said to do, but found that his ailments were keeping him from accomplishing what his church was teaching. Great Depression comes upon him and is still there. Demons torment him now and remind him how much of a failure he is. I see now the ultimate goal of the demons is not only to make Ron unsuccessful, but also to eventually destroy him. Suicide is their ultimate goal. So what is Ron's fate? I'm not allowed to show you that. I'm here to show you what is really going on behind the scenes. Can't you give me a hint? It's time to go. Wow, that was something else. Make sure you put down what you have learned in your book. I must be going. We will meet again soon. Until then! Oops! I forgot to get back into my spiritual form.